As usual, I want to thank everyone for posting their questions and making this video possible. I really appreciate it. Let's begin. Do you think betrayal and greed is prevalent in the West Side? As I've mentioned time and time again, betrayal and greed, no matter what family, is part of that life. How do you think Totorina would have fared in American Cosa Nostra? The first thing you have to try and understand is that the Sicilian mind is extremely different than the minds of Americans. And with the exception of taking out judges, law enforcement, journalists, etc., he would have more than likely also been a boss in America. Do you have to get permission as a member to go on vacation? Not necessarily permission, but you should put it on record with your captain that you're going away. And guys go on vacation all the time. What if a made guy in a crew doesn't socialize with the other guys in his crew and prefers not going to weddings, funerals, or dinner with other guys? Is he looked down upon? It's impossible to be in a crew and not socialize, even if it's forced company. You may be able to miss a wedding or two, but funerals are a must. You may be able to miss a dinner here and there, but you're not going to get away with isolating yourself. There was a time when I told our captain I no longer wanted to be in Anthony Guzzo's company for various reasons. And the answer he gave accurately can give an answer for this question. He told me, what are you going to do? Use her in the same crew. You have to see him and be around him. In the movie Donnie Brasco, Brasco refuses to move his boots while in the Japanese restaurant, despite Sonny Black telling him to take them off. If something like that were to happen in real life, how far could an associate push back before he crosses the line? Typically, if a captain or even a friend for that matter instructs an associate to do something, he better do it. Remember, Donnie Brasco is a movie, very different from real life. What did you think of Joe Danapoli? Was he a good consigliere? What qualities did he have? Was there anything in particular he did you thought was a good move? I happen to like Joe and would get a kick out of listening to him because he spoke in code a lot. I believed he handled his position well. As for his qualities, he knew the life. I also witnessed his treacherous side, as he knew very well how to put a guy in a trick bag, so you had to be on your toes with him. I don't have a specific incident that he did or ruled upon that I felt was a good move. Overall, during my time, he was good for the position. A little bias, but that's a given in that life. Segwaying into the next question, this person wanted to know if an underboss or consigliere would have a guy directly with them. I've answered this in the past, and the answer is yes. He also wants to know if an underboss or consigliere's sole income is from the money being kicked up by the crews. Not entirely. They may have rackets that they're involved in, for instance, like the guy who's with them, and receive a cut from that, as well as other things they may have on the side, even legitimate businesses. This next question made me laugh. Here it is. John, it's an obscure one, but were there any guys in that life that were metalheads? None that I ever noticed, but I will say a good way to get yourself shelved is to start showing up in that type of attire. What do you think would happen if Anthony Buddy Luongo took over as a Lucchese boss instead of Vic and Gas? Do you think it would have been better than it is now? Who knows? The family's power base, with Luongo alive, would have been in the Bronx. Even with him out of the picture, it eventually winded up there anyway. But whether the family would be different had Luongo lived is unknown. The base of power is currently in Brooklyn, where a great deal of mistakes are being made and continue to be made. I'm not at liberty to say what those mistakes are, but you never know. Things could shift back to the Bronx in time, and this would take place as the result of massive indictments and the rest. Here's another movie question. In Departed, Leonardo DiCaprio's character puts two made guys in the hospital while they were trying to collect money. In real life, would he be found dead for doing that? Again, we're talking about a movie. I can't say for a fact what would happen in real life, but let's just say the guy would definitely have a problem. In that situation, responding is a must, and the message needs to be loud and clear. It also depends on who's involved, but something like that has to be dealt with severely. Did you have any dealings or interactions with Patty from your induction ceremony at other points? As mentioned, Patty, and I don't remember his last name, was inducted on the same day as Anthony Guzzo and myself. Joe Cafe put him up, proposed him, and he was put in Joe's crew. Other than seeing him at functions, mostly wakes, I had no dealings with him. In the 70s and 80s, did the Lucchese's have dealings with the Cubans in the numbers racket? 
In the era which you're mentioning, I was a little kid, so I wouldn't know the answer. I do know that when the mob shifted away from the numbers racket, the Cubans took it over. I have a story about a family friend, a Gambino associate, who ran number spots that I may do something on. Did you have any dealings with dirty cops or ever experience being in jail with dirty cops? During my time in the street, I personally had no dealings with dirty cops. But while in prison, one of the guys who was in Fisker with us was William Phillips. He was an NYPD patrolman, and after getting caught taking bribes, he testified at the Knapp Commission against his fellow officers. Shortly after, he was arrested for a 1968 double murder that he wind up doing 33 years for. Ernie Grillo liked him and allowed him on our court in prison. The same day Ernie went home, Bill, it's what everyone called him, came out to the court and went to put his net bag down on one of the tables we had. I handed it back to him and told him he was no longer welcomed on the court. He said, but Ernie put me here. I smiled and told him, do you see Ernie here? Let me remind everyone to please like this video. And I always mention the super thanks icon, which I hate doing, but it's the only method of keeping this podcast going. And I appreciate everyone who's used it. What was the best inside joke you had with another friend in the family? Patty Deloroso and I would joke about Big John and his brother Boobsy. And I would joke with Patty's crew about Patty and his ways. Is it common for wise guys to carry a knife on a daily basis instead of a pistol? Let me just say, hardly anyone carries a pistol. As far as who carries a knife, I have no idea. When Big John had to bring the pistol for our induction ceremony, he told me he took out the firing pin in case the cops pulled him over. He only had to drive about a mile or so from his house to the location. So that's an example of wise guys and carrying guns today. Anthony Guzzo and I dealt with pistols all the time. A lot of these guys never even held the pistol, let alone used one. Was there a Sicilian faction of the Lucchese family? Not necessarily a Sicilian faction, but Paolo Laduca, a captain in the family, was designated as our liaison with the Sicilians. Is the mafia still involved in making money through selling fireworks? Not on the scale that they did years ago, but some families will have a guy or two who sell fireworks leading up to the 4th of July. Are there any Italian street gangs apart from the mob? I was going to answer that the mob is the only Italian street gang that I know of. Here's a scenario question. Two May guys sit down with their captains over a business disagreement. They rule in favor of guy number one, but guy number two disregards the decision and continues doing whatever it was that caused the problem in the first place. What do the captains do to enforce their ruling? It wouldn't be both captains, it would be the captain of guy number two, who would not only reprimand, but order him to stop doing whatever it is he's doing. And for the last question, if they would make a film about your life, who do you think would play you, and maybe some of the other people from your former life too? A good name for that movie would be Chaos. I think a close to accurate cast would be as follows. Ben Affleck would play me. Rami Malik as Joey DiBenedetto. Dominic Lombardozzi as Big John. Richard Gere as Patty Delarosso, John Malkovich as Ernie Grillo, David Provo as Johnny Sideburns, a bald Matthew McConaughey as Anthony Guzzo, and whoever this guy is as Bubsy Castelli.